Ski riders, including some of the top motocross names of Europe's assembled here, and they're off on a 20-minute race over a three-mile circuit, including jumps, chicanes, deep sand and tarn. There's a mile straight where they'll hit 100 miles an hour, and hairpins where the pace is down to just a crawl. Jackie Mertens of Belgium leads with René Vandermaar, a Dutchman taking over the command as the pack heads out at the start of this opening lap. In the interest of safety, the start was staggered. 11 waves of 50 competitors starting at five second intervals. That and a nice wide start area should have made things at least easy on the opening section, but not for everybody. The leaders low, they've got a clear track and out in front, uh, Dutchman Kate van der Ven is in command with Jackie Martins, René van der Maar and Eric Gaboz not so far behind. Things look easy for the leaders, but behind things are getting a little bit more tricky. But out goes the man with the yellow flag and there's a lot of them about, 1,100 officials all told for this monster event and most of them armed with yellow flags. Case van der Ven, bike number six though, on the KTM, out in front. Leaping at 60 miles an hour over the man-made jumps. The rest of the field being left further and further behind. And it's still René van der Maar in second place behind Case van der Ven as they turn round the hairpin at the end or halfway through the first lap and head out down the very, very quick main beach straight where the speeds will hit 100 miles an hour. Out in front, René van der Maar is now the new leader at the end of that sprint. Behind him, the Belgian, Jackie Martins. René van der Maar, a privateer, doing very well in front of this enormous crowd of Dutch enthusiasts. But Martins is keen to find a way through. Fails that time. Martin hangs on to the lead. The rest of the field getting closer and closer, and Martins is desperate to find a way past the Dutchman. Seizes his chance, goes through on the inside, and the Belgian is now in command. Well, there's been no chance at all for any of the competitors to practice around this circuit. This is the first time they've seen any of it out on the wheels, although one or two, of course, had a walk around the track. Martins on the KTM, out in front of 550 motocross machines, and he needs officials to tell him which way to go. And it's Martins ahead of René van der Maar. Then behind him, you can see Eric Gaboas and the yellow jersey moving up through the field. And now Gaboas, Eric Gaboas on the Suzuki, just brushing past the barrier there, trying very hard to take over the lead from Martins, but Martins hangs on. This is the battle now for the lead. But a problem for the front runners. This is the melee out over the jumps where the tail enders of the opening lap are gonna find the way difficult for the two men behind. And this is where Gaboas seizes his chance. He goes to the right-hand side, with Martins here on bike number one, goes to the left, and Gaboas seizes the chance to go through out in front. It's now Eric Gaboas on the Suzuki, ahead of Jackie Martins on the KTM. And Martins now must really get the throttle wide open if he's gonna catch Gaboas down the fast beach straight. Underneath the pier, the bikes topping 100 miles an hour. This is the man, though, out in front, Eric Gaboas. And don't let that number one on his back fool you. He's riding bike number seven, the Suzuki of the factory team. Gaboas picking his way through the slower tail enders. Over the jumps again, and Gaboas this time going for his favorite right-hand line. No problems this time for him. Through the ruts. Quick blip of the throttle, changing down the gearbox, missing a fallen rider then winding on the power and up through the gearbox, wheeling his way on to that fast beach section. See the bike snaking under acceleration. It's not the smoothest of rides down there, and they don't back off the power one little bit. Eric Gaboas, the man out in command. Gaboas, bike number 
lap number seven. Again, carving his way past the tailenders, and throughout the race, it's been difficult. On to the starting straight, a huge wide area of sand, and Gabar's now starting his last lap, can see victory in his grasp. Well, this start area looks wide enough for anybody, but Gabar's is in trouble. A tailender moves across his path. He's forced to the side, stalls his engine, and then has problems getting it started again. Three men go past, and in one foul swoop, Eric Gabor's drops from the race leader to fourth place. The bike fires up again, he charges off in pursuit, but he's got only half a lap to do something about catching the three men ahead of him. Leading the field now is the Dutchman, Kees van der Ven, on bike number six, out on one of the tarmac sections here. And although things look easy for the, t for the front runners, for the tail enders, sometimes it can be a problem. Meantime, the leaders are out on the final section of the circuit, Case van der Ven, number six, charging for a sensational victory in this first leg. Through the deep sand, you can see the sand now rutted so much that it's to down to the axle of the rear wheel, but he just winds on the throttle and pulls his way out of the sand. Case van der Ven, the race leader, heading for victory in what is perhaps one of the biggest off-road motorcycling events in the Dutch calendar. The fans wave him on, just a few hundred yards to go, and it's checkered flight time for Kate van der Ven, who wins from Harry Everts, Jackie Martins, Eric Gabors, and fifth, another Dutchman, Peter Hurling, who sticks a thumb in the air and waves a leg. But time and time, unfortunately, wait for no man, not even the organisers. And the bright idea by Bob de Jong, the man who masterminded the whole event, that the last lap of the second leg would see the competitors having to ride through the sea backfired miserably. After one false start, time was already against them. And here, somebody in the second row so keen to get away, he didn't actually wait for the start signal. Joe Martins leads the charge this time, but again, it's no go. They've all got to go back, even though not everybody knows it. Well, getting a field of this size all lined up again is easier said than done. The officials are really struggling, and though it might be funny to watch for outsiders, for the organisers, it's a disaster. And for the top riders and the factory teams, it's totally infuriating. A cloud of two-stroke smoke hangs above the field as they try to find their way back through the bad visibility to the place on the 11 rows where they were going to start from. It's tough for the organisers. But relentlessly, the tide climbs higher and higher up the beach. For the third time, they're off. But again, it's the riders who've made the decision to go and not the officials. Well, a tide of water on one side of him and a tide of riders all around him. And this latter-day overworked Canute fails all round. Joe Martins leads the charge but it's a totally wasted effort. They're going to do one lap, but it's in vain because the officials have decided that this is a false start. It would take a complete lap before the organizers could stop these men, and again, the water was beginning to rise further and further up the beach. It was a lap lapping round the wheels. In fact, speaking of lapping, the water really had the last word. Here come the leaders, flagged off, and they're gonna go back onto the grid for what they hoped will be the fourth and final attempt to get this race underway. But for this man, an excursion into the briny has made life very difficult indeed. And a welcoming bulldozer driver gives him a hand to get back into the race. Here comes the judge in the form of Willem Belderman, the head of Dutch motorcycle sport, and it's all over. Yes, and as a result of that, of course, the one, two, three of the first race were declared the overall winners. Victory for Kees van der Ven of Holland, in second place, the Belgian Harry Everts, another Belgian in third, Jackie Martins, and in fourth place was Herrick Gaboers. Well, I suppose that King Natchin was the winner at the end of it all, wasn't he?